Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, it's nice to be with you. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Ayman Askari. I am a, a rheumatologist and I work in England. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk to you um, uh, about uh, rheumatic diseases and cases of acute rheumatology uh, uh, where you are uh, uh, where you are uh, uh, called uh, as a first line health worker. Uh, I want to thank uh, and genuinely and deeply thank Dr. Tariq Khalife, who is uh, uh, my colleague and for his great effort in, uh, <coughs> in uh, producing uh, this conference and uh, trying to help uh, 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 our people and uh, uh, all the staff uh, in uh, all the uh, behind the scenes staff in, uh, <coughs> in uh, recording videos and technology. Uh, so I only have uh, half an hour, so I will have to be quick, but uh, maybe later on we will have time for questions. Uh, <laughs> so um, uh, acute, uh, uh, the, I, I divided it into four, uh, four topics or four chapters, uh, <laughs> vasculitis, uh, polyarthritis, and monoarthritis, and miscellaneous conditions, which uh, are many but I chose the most important ones. You can see this is a flat slide of hypermobility, which is, uh, which is also one of the conditions I look after. Uh, uh, this is giant cell arthritis, uh, which is a, a, a serious condition. And you can see the temporal artery is swollen, tender, and painful. The patient complains of headache. Uh, usually they are uh, older uh, generation, over 50, and the ESR is very high. Uh, diagnosis is by a biopsy, and now we don't do biopsy all the time. We do an ultrasound scan. I'll show you a picture. The, <coughs> the, uh, the prognosis in this disease, if it is not treated and diagnosed and detected, is they, uh, they get uh, blindness or they get uh, vasculitis of the uh, retinal artery, and this can lead to visual loss or blindness. So uh, 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 this picture showing, show, shows um, necrosis of the skin as uh, also a, a result of, uh, 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 of vasculitis. Uh, <coughs> this slide shows the, the ultrasound, and now we have this brilliant technique of uh, uh, sonography, and the ultrasound shows what is called the halo sign. Uh, here, I, I'm not sure if you can see my arrow, but this is the halo sign, uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, and uh, it is a specificity is high, 80 to 90 percent, uh, uh, and you need to treat immediately with a uh, high dose of steroids. Uh, uh, this is uh, vasculitis. Uh, we call it leukocytoclastic vasculitis. It is basically vasculitis of the skin, and uh, a biopsy would show a uh, high number of white cells uh, of leukocytes or neutrophils. And the cause is they have multiple causes, drugs, uh, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, malignancy, infections, they all can cause leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Uh, this is another vasculitis. It used to be called Wegener granuloma. Uh, it's, uh, it's pan of thalmitis. So the whole eye, is swollen, painful, uh, and obviously this eye will be so inflamed that the uh, retina is affected. So uh, this is pan of thalmitis due to Wegener granuloma. Now we call it GPA or uh, uh, granulomatous polyangitis. Uh, <coughs> serious condition needs steroids. So Wegener or the, uh, the uh, vasculitides uh, can cause neuropathy. And you might be called to somebody who has a weak foot, foot drop, or he cannot lift his hand. He has a wrist drop, and that could be due to vasculitis. Obviously, you have to think of other uh, causes, which like nerve injury, disc disease, trauma. But vasculitis is one of my uh, uh, my uh, uh, diseases or my conditions that I am uh, <coughs> uh, familiar with and look at. This is very common uh, vasculitis. Uh, uh, you all know it because it is called hinoch purpura, and it is uh, 
it is uh, or non thrombocytopenic purpura. So it is a type of vasculitis. It affects usually uh, teenagers, and uh, it it uh, it is uh, it is it is associated with arthritis, uh, renal involvement, uh, and uh, and. Uh, and abdominal pain. So the vasculitis in, in all the systems, really, in the GI system, in the kidneys, in the skin, in the joints. The treatment is also steroids, and it is it can lead to IgA. It is really an IgA nephropathy. The prognosis is good. Uh, we move to another vasculitis, which is not uncommon in the Middle East, uh, and you probably all have recognized uh, and have seen the uh, the uh, whiteness here. Uh, this is a debris in the uh, in the uh, anterior chamber. Uh, it is called hypopone, and it is uh, uh, it is a classic of uh, Behjet disease, uh, uh, Marad Behjet uh, Behjet disease, and uh, it is uh, as you all know, orogenital ulcerations. Uh, it can lead to blindness, uh, uh, particularly in young men. Uh, serious illness. We have many uh, medications, but uh, for oral genital ulcers, it's uh, usually the colchicine. Uh, but if it caused uh, vasculitis, you need to use uh, uh, steroids, uh, cyclosporin, azathioprine, uh, and now we are using NTTNF. You probably all know this. This is called erythema nodosum, also common, acute, painful swellings in the shin. It can be on the arms. Uh, and the, uh, uh, you don't need to do histology, but to be precise, you you could see vasculitis in the fat tissue, uh, and it can happen. It can occur in Behjet disease, and it can occur in streptococcal infections, uh, and uh, another condition called sarcoidosis. So sarcoidosis can be acute, uh, presenting with erythema nodosum uh, by Hiller lymphadenopathy and arthritis called Lofgren syndrome. Uh, and there's another syndrome, uh, rarer, uh, which is uh, Hereford syndrome, where you have Bell's palsy, uveitis, and parotid swelling. Uh, I see it once a year. Uh, uh, this is the by Hiller lymphadenopathy. You can see, in uh, you can see it. It's it's the differential diagnosis is lymphoma. Uh, polyarthritis. It means three joints and more. Okay, so when you have more than three joints, we call it poly, one joint, mono. And uh, 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 this is uh, chronic deformities, so uh, I'm not talking about this. Maybe we have another talk to, uh, uh, to talk about chronic conditions, uh, but you can see, you can see the, uh, the inflamed joints. Uh, this is called Botonier deformity, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, these patients are uh, usually stable and they have chronic deformity. Um, uh, and they don't sort of present to you acute. It's like diabetes. Patients are with diabetes stable, but they can go into acute uh, hypo or hyperglycemia. Now, this is acute polyarthropathy. You can see the difference. You can see the swelling, the shiny, uh, the shiny skin, the edema, the redness in the hand, and here on the, in the heel, in the ankle joint. So this is usually rheumatoid arthritis if it is symmetrical. But any uh, cause, uh, but there are other causes, of course, of uh, uh, polyarthritis. Um, uh, this is also acute swelling. You can see the PIP. This patient has rheumatoid arthritis. So the PIP and MCPs are involved in rheumatoid. This is another polyarthritis. I'm sure you all uh, see psoriasis. Psoriasis is common in the general population. It's a skin disease. Uh, about three percent. It depends uh, on on uh, if you go to Europe or the northern hemisphere is more psoriasis. So thirty percent, three zero of patients with skin psoriasis they develop psoriatic arthritis. And you can see the psoriatic arthritis can affect the DIP. There are five types or five patterns of psoriatic arthritis, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, dactylitis, which is uh, uh, which is called sausage finger as well. Uh, and in America, they call it cigar shaped finger because the whole finger is very uh, very uh, uh, unsightly and the, and uh, 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 deforming and very difficult to treat. Uh, this is also dactylitis, you can see in the foot. So 
it is uh, this is less acute than the previous one so the whole finger or the whole digit becomes uh, swollen and uh, painful now uh, i don't want you to forget in this uh, time and age of covid that covid-19 can uh, uh, can cause joint pain uh, arthralgia and myalgia i had covid uh, in may and i had pain severe pains in my joints uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm recovered but uh, it's just that uh, uh, viruses can cause arthritis and polyarthritis. The most famous one is hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and rubella. Uh, and uh, they can present to GPs, to family practitioners, because they are common. And they, they behave like rheumatoid. Uh, there's no point doing a lot of investigations. They, they get better. They get better in, in a week or two. Uh, hepatitis C can be chronic. Now, in acute uh, monoarthritis, we finished the polyarthritis. In uh, monoarthritis, uh, we have uh, <coughs> two conditions you should always remember, uh, gout and sepsis. Sepsis is more important, but they can, they can be an overlap or they look very similar to each other, gout and sepsis. Sepsis is serious because if you have an infection, it can uh, uh, spread via the blood and it can cause septicemia, and it can uh, lead to the demise of the patient. So sepsis, it need to be recognized, and I think uh, uh, sometimes you, you send to the orthopedic, you send to the physical therapist, to the neurologist, it doesn't matter who you send to, just recognize sepsis and treat it immediately. So you can see here, I'm giving you examples of uh, <coughs> sepsis, you can see the knee, hot, swollen, inflamed, angry, and, um, and there is other tests we can do, the patellar tap tests, uh, the bulge tests, uh, to, uh, uh, and we can aspirate, obviously, and take the fluid and find the bacteria. Uh, more, uh, more pictures of sepsis, the uh, ankle is swollen. Uh, it's important to know, really, in, in dark-colored people like People in the Middle East, they are not dark, but they are olive oil. Uh, but I am in London. I deal with black people. And you don't see, you don't see uh, the redness. So uh, the, uh, it doesn't look like I'm putting these slides to compare. Look at the, uh, uh, here you can see clear redness. While here it is, it is inflamed, it is swollen, but you don't see the redness very clearly. And you see, it's, it, it is telling you I am septic. It is angry, it's hot, it's inflamed. Uh, now, if you are old person or a diabetic person, you don't see the features of redness and, uh, and severe inflammation very clearly. Uh, sometimes, uh, and also if you are immune suppressed. So if you are immune suppressed, uh, uh, the, uh, if you are immune suppressed, the features of inflammation, the cardinal features of inflammation, you all know, which is changing color, color, dolor, pain, and swelling, they don't uh, always show. So you have to have a high index of suspicion uh, in, in patients who are immunosuppressed taking steroids. They don't, they have pain in the joints and sometimes very moderate pain and, uh, and they actually have sepsis. The bacteria is usually staph staphylococcus, uh, uh, but you could also uh, have uh, 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 pseudomonas, uh, uh, you uh, could have uh, the uh, uh, gonorrhea or the, uh, the gram-negative gonococci is still quite common in, uh, in the young population. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, uh, in, uh, sepsis can be in any joint, and as you all know, the spine, uh, the spine is full of joints. All the, between the vertebra, there are joints. So here is uh, uh, discitis. So it is septic discitis, and you can see here the inflammation. You can see that that is an MRI, and it's easy on the MRI. You can see the edema and the inflammation, but you wouldn't know it's for definite it is sepsis, and you wouldn't know the bacteria unless you do an aspiration or a biopsy uh, to take it out. And that is serious. I see also septic discitis or sep sepsis in the spine probably twice a year. 
Uh, obviously, my orthopedic colleagues, I am a rheumatologist, my orthopedic colleagues probably see more. Uh, <clears throat> this needs really, it needs, a, it needs culturing and you need to uh, treat with the correct antibiotic, otherwise they will not get better. This is also sepsis, and you can see this is like a fistula coming, and uh, this is uh, a chronic. Uh, so it is it is acute or chronic. Uh, so and uh, this in this case it was TB. So I put this slide on purpose so you don't forget TB. I think TB is more common in uh, in the Middle East than in uh, in Europe. Although in the UK we always test for TB because we have uh, <laughs> we have a resurgence of TB. Also in North America, I think you've got uh, people who have malnutrition, alcohol, all uh, 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 can uh, immigrants, they can all have uh, uh, tuberculosis. So, uh, and the treatment obviously is different. And uh, this is uh, to show you also other sites of infection. So that's also sepsis. Sepsis is important. I'm putting a lot of slides on it. And sepsis is, uh, uh, this is the sternoclavicular joint. And uh, there are many other uh, other causes of swelling in the sternoclavicular joint, like ankylosing spondylitis, uh, SAFO syndrome. But uh, this is septic, and you can see this test is called uh, isotope uh, uh, isotope scan or isotope nuclear scan or nuclear medicine. And you can see that it is so hot; uh, uh, the, the uptake is so high due to uh, due to the infection. Uh, now we, we finish sepsis. The other uh, the other main condition in monoarthritis is gout, and gout uh, it's uh, this is called podagra. It's classic in the big toe, uh, the first MTP, uh, and it is so painful. It is one of the most uh, painful conditions in medicine. Uh, the <laughs> uh, acute gouty arthritis. So gout can be chronic, and it can be uh, uh, acute presentation. Uh, uh, so uh, the best, uh, uh, the best or the most reliable method of diagnosis is to find the urate acid crystals. So you need to really to aspirate, put a small needle, very painful, and uh, uh, aspirate and culture and uh, look at the uh, look at the fluid under the microscope. This is also gout. Gout can cause bursitis. So it can cause uh, bursa. This is olecranon bursitis due to gout. It's very difficult to differentiate between gout and sepsis clinically, uh, unless you, unless from the whole picture, unless you, you, you know, you take a history, etc. Uh, and sometimes you have both uh, gout and infection. That's as a consultant. That's what I see. I see complicated cases. Uh, X-ray of the an X-ray of the gout, uh, and that is you can see this is called the punched out. Erosions. This is the tophi, uh, <coughs> the tophi, uh, uh, and uh, uh, destruction of the joint uh, due to gout. So gout, the risk of gout, it can cause stones, it can cause destruction of the joints, uh, uh, and uh, renal uh, uh, can cause nephropathy. Apart from it being very painful. Now, and if you see this, if you see this, you will know it is gout because this is really the gouty crystals. Coming out, uh, uh, coming out. Uh, they are like white material, like like cheese or like sand. They uh, <laughs> they come out and they are very painful. They ooze, okay. And uh, uh, they are treated with. They can be treated with allopurinol, uh, uh, but it takes three to four years to uh, to uh, for for the orphibuxostat to uh, remove the gouty the gouty tophi. This is also gout uh, in the ear. Uh, a gouty tofa in the ear, uh, and uh, <laughs> when I did my examination, uh, I was taught uh, for for the MRCP is to always look at the ear of the patient. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is the, uh, the this is the uh, the uh, neg the uh, the negatively birefringent gouty crystals, and I said that uh, <laughs> this is called negative birefringent, uh, and it is needle shaped. So it is needle shaped, and that is the uh, the only really sure way or pathognomonic way of of confirming the presence of gout. This is a chronic. This is a chronic gout, and I still see even in in England, and I'm sure also in Canada, you probably see uh, 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 neglected people who didn't take their medications or they didn't care, and they have chronic deformities of gout. 
very rare. I mean, I see this once every, probably every three to four years in the UK. I don't think we have a lot like this in the Middle East, but this is the, uh, this is the, uh, the gouty tofi, uh, the gouty tofi, and uh, this is the, uh, the colchicine. This is the flower, which is called colchicium ottomanali, which is, uh, usually was given as a laxative initially in Persia, and now uh, it is found to be an anti-inflammatory and anti-gout. There are other diseases which are similar to gout, uh, which I see, uh, uh, one called pseudogout. So uh, gout, pseudogout or false gout, it's very similar to gout uh, uh, clinically, uh, but the crystal is different, uh, and also the age group is different. Pseudogout affects usually older people and sometimes it's symmetrical and the crystal is called calcium pyrophosphate crystal and obviously you do not treat it with allopurinol or fibroxostat it's a different crystals it's not related to uh, it's not related to uh, purines or food or purines this is pseudogout so you can see it is characterized by something called chondrocalcinosis uh, detected by X-ray. Uh, there are other causes for chondrocalcinosis. Any any hypercalcemia basically can cause chondrocalcinosis, but uh, pseudogout is one important one. Uh, this is also another acute uh, condition uh, <coughs> called acute calcific tendinitis. It is caused by another crystal uh, called hydroxyapatite, uh, and uh, you can see here. You can see this crystal here, this calcification, and it causes severe pain uh, and very acute, uh, usually in the shoulder. It is, uh, uh, but it can be in other joints. I've seen it once in the Achilles tendon, but it's usually in the shoulder. Treatment is a steroid injection, and the patient will thank you the next day and maybe bring you a box of chocolate because they are so happy, very rewarding. Uh, uh, we don't, I mean, the cause is hydroxyapatite crystals, basically. Now, this is the, the food. These are the foods you should avoid in gout. And the typical picture of gout is a person who is a male, middle-aged, heavy drinker. Maybe they have hypertension, hyp, uh, hyperlipidemia, syndrome X. Now, we finished the gout or the monoarthritis. I will talk to you about miscellaneous conditions which may uh, come across family doctor. Uh, this is the photosensitive rash, uh, and they are all related to uh, rheumatic diseases. Rheumatic diseases or rheumatology is actually 30% of general practice. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so it is uh, not an, you know, it is very useful to know about rheumatic conditions. 30% of general practice is aches and pains and fibromyalgia and osteoarthritis. And so <clears throat> this is the photosensitive rash of lupus. And uh, it is called also the V-neck sign. This is the uh, heliotrope rash of dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis is not common, uh, but uh, this uh, rash is uh, pathognomonic. It doesn't occur in any other disease. It is not makeup. It is a rash and it is uh, 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 described as heliotrope or lilac or violaceous or violet uh, or purple. And this is also another important sign for dermatomyositis called Gottrin sign. And you see it is the same rash, which is uh, the, uh, the same color purple, benefsiji in, in Arabic. I remember a few words, but not a lot. This is another condition, uh, which is, uh, yes, you are all right. You all thought it's a DVT, uh, and you should think of a DVT, deep vein thrombosis. But this is the differential diagnosis of DVT, which is, yes, ruptured Baker cyst. So this is a ruptured Baker cyst, also uh, an elderly or middle-aged person, with usually with osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, sudden severe pain in the knee which go down to the calf, but you always should do uh, the D-dimer and you should do uh, the uh, Doppler, Doppler ultrasound to make sure it's not a DVT because that's the more serious. The rupture Baker cyst is painful, chronic, but it is not life-threatening. 
It's treated with analgesics, support, walking stick, bandage, brace, and uh, ibuprofen or something like an ibuprofen, NSAID. Uh, we almost finished. So this is avascular necrosis. And that is also a serious condition. And it can be acute hip pain. So not only hip, it could be in the elbow, it could be on the shell, shoulder. It is, uh, it is vague, severe pain. You cannot, you don't know the cause uh, and you need to do an MRI. You can see this is basically a dead bone. So it is ischemia in the bone. People who are on steroids, I had patients who were on steroids. Uh, uh, I see it twice a year, three times a year, uh, because I see a lot of lupus and rheumatoid. So they have steroids and then they have hip pain. Everything is under control, but they are, they, they have the, you can treat it. It is treatable surgically, but also we give, I, we give biphosphonate and biphosphonate, allantonic acid for a year. It's proven to reduce or minimize the bone destruction. PVNS is almost like the cancer of the joints. And you can see it is called uh, pigmented villonidular, uh, villonidular uh, synovitis uh, or synovoma, uh, pigmented villonidular uh, synovitis. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, macroscopically on surgery, and this is with the MRI, uh, and uh, the <coughs> it's chocolate-like material. It is, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's basically a tumor of unknown cause, uh, and it is treated with radiotherapy. Uh, successfully, I treated uh, I treated a lady from Calcilia from the West Bank for four or five years with uh, uh, with yttrium, uh, radioactive yttrium, and uh, she she did very well. Uh, it is not cancer, but it is destructive. So uh, if it grows, it is destructive to the joint, uh, and it will basically co cause uh, it will cause immobility and pain. Not for acute spinal pain. That's also uh, bread and butter for uh, GPs, for family doctors, uh, back pain. So acute spinal pain, we mentioned one condition, which is sepsis, but most patients do not have sepsis. They have a disc disease, okay? But uh, apart from disc disease, which should be giving you pain like sciatica, sciatica-like pain uh, <coughs> with neurology, uh, absent reflexes, uh, uh, reduced straight leg grazing, uh, <coughs> Uh, acute spinal pain can be due to inflammatory condition like ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis. And that pain is different. It's often misdiagnosed, is underdiagnosed, and uh, it's unrecognized. And I see this a lot, uh, even in, you know, in, uh, in uh, Western countries like the UK. I see patients treated for disc for 10 years, and they keep going to their doctor. And I'm sure in America is the same. And they have missed that it is an inflammatory pain and it is due to sacroiliitis. Uh, osteoporosis in the elderly, in, in, uh, in women, uh, also can cause severe back pain due to collapse. So vertebral collapse, like you see here, <coughs> that's why uh, most people become short. When they are older, they become short. So because of uh, vertebral collapse uh, or uh, the disc become dry and shoveled and uh, and uh, uh, the spine becomes shorter so uh, vertebral collapse uh, or both if you have uh, 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 collapsed vertebra thick bone osteoporosis and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, this is the x-ray uh, and you get also dryness or uh, atrophy of the disc the causes as you all know postmenopausal smoking uh, uh, liver disease uh, senile, so many causes for uh, uh, osteoporosis or vertebral collapse. It is treatable. All these conditions are, let's say, preventable and treatable. Steroids uh, can cause uh, it is uh, vertebral collapse. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I hope I'm sorry it was very quick, but I am happy uh, uh, in the future to give separate talks about separate conditions. Uh, all the best. Bye-bye. And I'm happy to answer some questions. <laughs>